Hello everyone, what's going on? I'm Gaff from Mass974 back again today and welcome to another Valve Source Code tutorial. Today I'm going to be covering a topic that has been on my bucket list for a little while now. It's not a viewer requested tutorial or anything, it's just something that I wanted to get done. And it is about adding a dynamic sky to your source mod. Now, a prerequisite for this tutorial is that you need to be able to compile shaders on your system. And I have done a couple of videos already on the channel about how to be in a position to compile shaders. So following either one of those videos is necessary to be able to follow one of the steps in this tutorial. Now, apparently this dynamic sky shader effect was meant to be in a mod called Vance, which has been cancelled. And you'll probably see from some of the footage, but it is kind of like an incomplete effect. You can kind of see lines in the sky where segments join together and it's not a seamless sort of experience. But, you know, it looks good enough and it's better than the default sort of Half-Life 2 skies. So without any more preamble nonsense, let's just get straight into the video. So first of all, you need to go into the description of this video or follow the Valve Developer Wiki link I'll leave in the description down below. And you need to download a file called skydome.zip. Now this will contain all of the files that you need. So once that .zip file has been downloaded, you need to extract it and copy and paste the contents to the respective directories. So for example, the shader folder would go to your source mods SRC material system STD shaders. And then the code folder inside of that folder, you'd want to copy that to your SRC game folder. And then what you want to do is open up the games solution. And then inside of the client project, you want to right click inside of there and then select add existing item. And then you want to select cnvskydome.cpp and cnvskydome.h as you'll see in the video. And for the server project, you want to, again, right click somewhere in that project, then go add existing item and then find envskydome.cpp and add that to the server project. So once those files have been added, you want to go to view.cpp, which is a file on the client and inside of the cview render colon colon init function below m underscore modulate single color dot init blah de blah. I want to add m underscore skydome material dot init and then in brackets in speech marks shaders forward slash skydome and then after the speech marks texture group model as you'll see in the video. Now this will show up as an error because m underscore skydome material hasn't been defined yet but we will get to that. So once this is done you want to go to viewender.h and beneath the function declaration of set water overlay material you want to add void draw sky and then in brackets const c view setup and view. And then underneath c material reference m underscore underwater overlay material, you want to add a c material reference m underscore sky dome material, which will alleviate the error that I just mentioned. Then once this has been done, you can go to view render.cpp and near the top of the file add a hashtag include of c underscore n underscore sky dome dot h and then find c view render colon colon draw view models and beneath that function you simply just want to copy and paste the block of code that i'll show which will be in the valve developer wiki article because it's just going to be too long and too tedious for me to outline every single part of that code in this video it's much simpler to just follow that guide basically and just copy and paste that section and then what you want to do is go to the c rendering 3d view colon colon draw world function and above the unsigned long engine flags line you want to add if m underscore draw flags and df draw skybox and then two and symbols g underscore p sky dome and g underscore p sky dome arrow is dynamic sky enabled you'll see exactly what you need to do in the video with the brackets and the number of ampersands and all that but then in curly brackets you want to do m underscore draw flags and equals tilde df draw skybox 
which basically means we don't render the engine sky because we have a sky of our own and then m underscore p main view arrow draw sky and then in brackets asterisk this you'll see everything in the video as i've just said and then at this point you can build the solution and it should compile with no errors for any of the projects that you care about so for me i'm doing this for the half-life 2 code so the episodic projects aren't going to compile but that's okay because I only care about the Half-Life 2 projects building successfully. Now at this step we do need to compile shaders. So we do want to navigate to your source code material system std shaders folder. And you want to open up std shader dx9 20b.txt. And you want to clear out all of the listed files here. Or at the very least just comment them out. And then you want to load up std shader dx9 30.txt and do the exact same thing except you only want to have skydome underscore ps30.fxc and skydome underscore vs30.fxc listed as basically shader source files to be compiled. Then once this is done you need to run build hl2shaders.bat or build episodic shaders.bat or build hl2mp shaders.bat dependent on the situation for your mod and the shaders should compile without any issues. As mentioned earlier, you do need to follow one of the prerequisite tutorials I have done on this channel to be able to compile shaders in the first place. But this will be a good test to see if you actually can compile shaders, if my other tutorials have actually been good in that regard, to actually tell you what to do in that sense. However, we have compiled the shaders, but it's not going to be recognized by the game basically because we need to modify the game shader dx9.dll file to make the dynamic sky recognized. So, what we need to do now is open up the everything solution, and then once the everything solution is opened up, you want to go to the shaders project that is appropriate for your mod. So, in my case, it's shaders hl2. And you want to right click on the source files folder and you want to add an existing item and you want to add skydome atmosphere.cpp, skydome atmosphere helper.cpp, and skydome atmosphere helper.h. And then you may end up experiencing errors with the .inc files, especially in skydome atmosphere helper.cpp. And at least from my experimentation, it seems even the stock shader files have some issues. Um, however, you can simply remove the stock files because you're not going to be using them. And in my case, I was using SL 555's version of the shader compile tool, which may have moved the .inc files to a location that the everything solution wasn't recognizing. So what I did was I copied the .inc files to a folder called FXC tmp9 as you'll probably see in the video if that is a necessary step for you to do and in the process of removing some of the stock shader files it resolved these issues automatically so that's all i can really advise is to make sure the .inc files are in the fxc tmp9 folder and basically if there's no errors then you can compile the project and it should work perfectly fine without any issues and you should get a game shader dx9.dll file that will include the dynamic sky code. So now all we need to do is define a new material. Now what you need to do is go into your game folder and in my case I'll go to mod hl2 which is essentially where the bin cfg materials maps models game info.txt would be located. And then you want to go into the materials folder and then create a folder called shaders if you need to. And at this point you can open up something like notepad or VTF edit if you have that. And all you want to do is the following. So inside of speech marks you want to have skydome underscore atmosphere in all capitals. And then inside of curly brackets you want to have inside of speech marks dollar sign LUT. And then in another set of speech marks after that, skybox forward slash sky underscore fake underscore white. And then on a new line inside of speech marks, dollar sign alpha test reference, again in all capital letters. And you could just put one after this without the speech marks. Then what you want to do is save as. So not just save, but save as. So you can change the extension from a .text file. 
um, and again you can just choose all files to make sure it gets saved as something that is not a text file and you want to save this as skydome.vmt inside of your mods materials shader folder so now all you would need to do is to make sure that you have a level with an env skydome entity in it and launch into that map for testing purposes now the valve developer wiki does have a block of code that can be added to a .fgd file which can be interpreted by the hammer editor and basically allow this env skydome entity to be usable now what i will say is you do need to be careful with the parameters that you use because you can get some seizure inducing effects if you input some of the wrong parameters so you gotta be very careful however one of the nice things about this implementation in its current state is that all of the parameters can be manipulated via the developer console so essentially you can change the values in game to something that you like and then apply it to the hammer editor in skydome entity and then it can work that way so it's basically able to be modified on the fly in game now as i mentioned earlier you might see some lines in the clouds which i assume are where some of the segments are meant to join together however i wouldn't know how you're supposed to fix this to make it align perfectly and basically i wouldn't know how to fix this issue with lines in the clouds and for whatever reason it also seems as if the nth sun entity you know the sun which you can have in maps where there's open sky that also doesn't work with this implementation and i don't know how to resolve it so yeah there's a couple of incidents with this there's some problems i don't know how to resolve but for the most part it looks kind of good i would say it's better than the default half-life 2 skies but again we can probably have a dialogue in the comment section down below about how good this effect really is or not but that's pretty much the tutorial everyone, I do hope you found this helpful and informative and if not, let me know in the comment section down below. But regardless, like, comment, share, subscribe and all that good stuff and I'll see you again very soon for a very special 3 in 1 Valve Source Code tutorial to mark 25 tutorials on the channel. So yeah, hope you'll check that out everyone and take care, peace out, see you later, have a great day.